Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all and welcome to the channel. Uh, this video is not a tutorial. It is a special video uh, considering the time of the year uh, that has uh, that draws closer to us. Uh, I know I missed Eid al-Fitr, the first Islamic holiday and Ramadan or rather the congratula congratulatory messages for Ramadan and Eid al-Fitr. I apologize for that. I intend uh, to redeem myself in uh, next year, bi-idhnillah and God willing. Uh, so I thought I would capitalize on the moment uh, since we are in Dhul Hijjah, the 12th month in the Islamic calendar. And it is called Dhul Hijjah, which literally translates to the month of the pilgrimage, the Islamic pilgrimage, that is, for those who are unfamiliar with uh, the Islamic calendar or the Islamic liturgies. So uh, I know it is not Eid yet, but because I may be indisposed with uh, familial uh, greetings during Eid, I thought I would record this m uh, message beforehand. Uh, but before we begin, as usual, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wal mursaleen, Sayyiduna Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawmi al-deen, wa arda Allahumma anna ma'ahum ajma'in, Allahumma ameen. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد We begin in the name of Allah, the most merciful in this life and in the hereafter, and we thank him for all of his blessings that he has bestowed upon us, for they are innumerable. And we pray that we follow in the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his fellow companions. Amen. We also ask for prayers and blessings to be bestowed upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, as they were bestowed upon Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him and his family. Now, before I congratulate everyone uh, about Eid, uh, or congratulate everyone for Eid, I would like to remind everyone of the importance of the 10 days, the first 10 days of this uh, holy month, which is one of the four sacred months, or Al-Ashur Al-Hurum. Though it is a bit difficult to translate Hurum to English, um, possibly forbidden, restrictive, prohibitionary, considering their holy status. Uh, well, they, ha they have a specialized status. There are four months within the Islamic calendar that have a specialized status compared to the other eight months. But feel free to read about that if you would like. That is not the purpose of, uh, of this uh, uh, video. But I would like uh, to remind you all uh, about the importance of these 10 days. So ensure that you are praying and supplicating, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, which translates to praise Allah or praise God for forgiveness. And remember the criteria for forgiveness, the three criteria that we discussed in the truth of forgiveness. Do not commit a sin uh, and then ask God for forgiveness so that you can commit it again. That is not considered uh, a forgiven sin. So ensure that your intentions are sincere, as we have mentioned in the Truth of Forgiveness video. And I would also like to, uh, well, firstly, the upcoming Eid, which should be our approximately 9th or 10th of July, corresponding to the 9th of 10th of July, Allah and God willing, is called the Eid al-Adha. Adha comes from Uthiyya, which stands for sacrifice. Now, we are not practitioners of Kabbalah, where we sacrifice uh, humans, 
or animals and we are not the same as the Mayans who used to also sacrifice humans or any paganistic religion truly sacrifice here we sacrifice a sheep or a goat and then distribute the meat to various people whether they are family members or poor people in need of food so the purpose of this uh, Eid is the sacrifice that we can distribute for people to eat. Uh, but uh, the, the uh, story behind Eid al-Adha is quite fascinating, especially if you trace its origins to Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, and his sons Cain and Abel, or Qabil and Habil respectively. Most of you are probably familiar with the biblical story of Cain and Abel, but I will mention the true story, which is the Islamic version. So Cain, uh, also known as Qabil, and the name Qabil means uh, farmer, if I recall correctly. If I am mistaken, feel free to correct me in the comments below. And Habil means uh, shepherd. And that is what their professions were at the time, Qabil and Habil. They were the descendants of, not descendants, the direct, <laughs> the direct uh, progeny of um, Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, and Lady Eve, or Hawa, which means... <coughs> Uh, from life, how what means from life, because she was created from a living being, which is Prophet Adam. I will just place the names here. I know this video may have been, uh, would have been more appealing if I used whiteboard presentation, but to be quite honest, uh, I may be unable to uh, finance such an endeavor currently anyways so if i am boring you with this presentation i apologize that is not my intention but i am simply recording with my current capabilities and i cannot uh, finance subscriptions to websites such as video scribe considering uh, when i saw the prices they were a bit uh, difficult for me considering my current familial circumstances and current job status too. Uh, it is a volatile uh, time for me, so it is a bit difficult. So I apologize if the presentations are not as appealing as I want them to be. You know what, I will add uh, brackets like so. So, uh, Lady a Eve bore uh, 40 children, 20 times. So every time, twins were born. Now, in the religion of Prophet Adam, originally, to populate the earth, of course, because he was the first human being and she was the first female. So, to populate the earth, each twin each male twin was allowed to marry a female twin from another birth. So, for example, if you have a male and a female from one birth, these two were not allowed to marry, the actual twins. But if you have a male <coughs> and a female, from another birth, uh, like so, this male was allowed to marry this female, and this male was uh, allowed to marry this female. That was the rule at the time. Do not think of it as incestuous, because you are a finite being. Your mind cannot comprehend uh, except that which is which has been granted to you so do not think of it as incest for you do not even know what incest means before you start judging these facts 
How about you go to the atheists who uh, or the people who say love is love and approve of actual incest? Then you can come and discuss this. Anyways, sorry, it just infuriates me how people are uh, hypocritical with their double standards. Actually, they are rather obvious and evident about, about it, which is rather despicable. Anyways, so Cain... Uh, People claim that uh, Qabil was the older brother. It does not truly really matter. Qabil wanted to marry his twin. But since that was forbidden in uh, Prophet Adam's religion at the time, which, which, is, uh, which was Islam, Islam has been the only religion throughout the timeline of humanity. But after the death of each prophet, the descendants... Uh, of his people would start adulterating and tainting the texts to suit their needs. That is why there would always be a succeeding prophet to correct the deviancy of the people. Until Prophet Muhammad وسلم, peace be upon him, there is no prophet after him, which is why Islam has been preserved till this day. And no one no matter how hard they try, can taint or adulterate the Holy Qur'an. And you do not need to challenge me in arrogance, because better people than you have tried and they failed. So, <laughs> if you wish to challenge me, go ahead, but you will fail regardless. You will be wasting your time killing yourself, while I will be sipping lemon juice, enjoying life. <laughs> Anyways. However, uh, because of the, the tenets of the religion, Habil, or Abel, was going to marry Qabil's twin. And Qabil was against that. So Qabil went to Prophet Adam and said, I want to change the rule. I want to marry my own twin rather than Habil's twin. Some people say because uh, his twin was more beautiful than Habil's twin, that is why he wanted to marry her. I honestly do not know, nor, nor, nor do I care, because this is not the moral of the story. So Prophet Adam uh, prayed to God, and God revealed to Prophet Adam that Qabil and Habil must uh, offer uh, I do not want to say sacrifices, but uh, offerings, yes. Both of them had to make an offering at an altar, a specified altar. Uh, the offering that is accepted will reveal the... Uh, how should I phrase this? So, who, uh, uh, whoever has his offering accepted will be the one who marries that uh, uh, which he wants or the the proper wife for him it is a bit difficult to phrase this situation mainly because english is my is not my first language thankfully arabic is alhamdulillah and, and thank god so if qabil's offering was accepted then he can marry his own sister. However, if Habil's offering is accepted, then Qabil will be forced to marry Habil's twin. Qabil, being a farmer, made an offering of, uh, you can say, fruits and vegetables. Uh, or, uh, to keep it generalized, a harvest. However, and this would highlight the types of personalities uh, that people are. Uh, simply because Qabil wanted to marry someone uh, and make her happy does not make him a good person. You will see how in just a moment. When he was collecting the harvest, he chose the poorest uh, quality he could find in his farm to offer it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or offer it to God and whenever he harvested good quality he would eat it so he wanted to offer God poor quality 
which highlights how despicable he is as a person. Habil, on the other hand, was a shepherd. So he chose the healthiest and fattest sheep he had and offered it as an offering. So they placed their both of their offerings on the altar. This is of course a, a visual representation, not an accurate, not an accurate representation of the altar. So if we have the sheep here like so. That is actually not bad. And whatever he offered, we do not really care. A scintillating white light descended from the heaven, encompassed the sheep, and then raised it to the heavens. Which means that Habil's sheep was accepted as the offering. We will keep this sheep for later. You will see why. Out of jealousy, Qabil killed Habil, and then the crow taught him how to bury his uh, brother, to hide his sin. And from that day onwards, God has decreed that the earth is never allowed to swallow or percolate blood. If you place droplets of blood on the ground, they will never percolate. They will never sink or be absorbed into the ground. As, as opposed to water. Ever since the day Qabil killed Habil, that was God's decree. Now, let us venture forth uh, centuries later, after Prophet Enoch, peace be upon him, uh, or Prophet Seth even, uh, then Prophet Enoch, then Prophet uh, Noah, then Prophet Abraham, and that is where we will stop. Now, Prophet Abraham, uh, I will write his name as we know him, but I will mention his name in the Latinized version. That way, if non-Arabic speakers are watching this or non-Muslims are watching this, they would know which prophet I speak of. Prophet Ibrahim. Uh, sorry, Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him. And he had two wives. The first one that he married was Lady Sarah, which I believe is princess in Hebrew. I am unsure. And the other one is Lady uh Hajar. I do not know how, how her name is spelled uh, in Latin, to be quite honest. If you know, feel free to inform me in the comments below. Now, from uh, the union or matrimony between Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, and Lady Sarah, Prophet Ishaq or Prophet Isaac was born and he is known as the father of the Israelites, not the Jews. The term Jew came much later after Prophet Moses's, after Prophet Musa, Prophet Moses' death, uh, after Prophet Moses's peace be upon him's death. So the term Jew is not mentioned in the Torah to begin with. Just like the term Christian is not the proper term because it came after Prophet Jesus' time, peace be upon him. And from the matrimony between Prophet uh, Abraham and Lady Hajar, Prophet Ismail or Prophet Ishmael, peace be upon him, was born and I believe his name means the name of God because il in Hebrew means God ism at least in Arabic means name I do not know if that is also how it is in Hebrew because Hebrew and Arabic are uh, related they are cognate <coughs> though Arabic is the origin of all languages but that is a tale for another time now from 
Prophet Ishaq's or Prophet Isaac's this, uh, progeny came Prophet Jacob or Prophet Yaqub, peace be upon him, then Prophet Joseph or Prophet Yusuf, peace be upon him, and his siblings. And uh, from his siblings, I believe it was Levi or Levi, came Prophet Moses or Prophet Musa, peace be upon him, and his brother, Prophet Aaron uh, or Prophet Harun, peace be upon him. And then from their descendants came Prophet David or Dawood, uh, Prophet Dawood, peace be upon him, and his son, Prophet Solomon or Prophet Suleiman, peace be upon him. Then Prophet Zachary uh, or Prophet Zachariah, peace be upon him, and Prophet uh, Yahya or John, peace be upon him. Then uh, Prophet uh, Isa or Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. And of course, there are the... Uh, Prophet Lot or Prophet Lut, peace be upon him, was uh, Prophet Ibrahim or Prophet Abraham's uh, cousin. He was the son of Prophet Abraham's uncle. And then you have uh, Prophet Jonah or Prophet Yunus. I do not remember at which time he appeared, but I, if I recall correctly, he is closely related to Prophet uh, Ibrahim, peace be upon him. You know what? I should have attached the uh, family, the familial tree of all the prophets. I will have to search for it in my documents and place it as a, as an attachment to this video. If anyone is interested, that is. But unfortunately, it will be in Arabic. So if you are able to translate it to English, uh, please help our brothers and sisters uh, understand the familial tree. I will try my best to translate it if I have the time. Now, there is a famous story about Prophet Ibrahim or Prophet Abraham receiving a vision. And visions of prophets are commandments. They are not visions because when a prophet sleeps, his heart is asleep, but his eyes are awake. So anything revealed to a prophet in his slumber as a vision, or if you would like to call it as a dream, though there is a difference, that is a decree or an edict from God. So the story is that Prophet Ibrahim or Prophet Abraham saw in a vision that he is sacrificing his son. Some people say it was Prophet Ishaq or Prophet Isaac. Some people say it is Prophet Ismail or Prophet Ishmael. Again, it does not matter. In some people, some Christians believe that in Islam, it explicitly states in the Quran that it was Prophet Ishmael or Prophet Ismail. I would like to tell these people to read the Quran before they actually speak, because Prophet Ismail's name is never mentioned explicitly in that incident. It is alluded to uh, in the sayings of the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he said, I am the son of the two sacrificed, his actual father and his great-grandfather, Prophet Ismail, peace be upon him, or Prophet Ishmael. But again, whether it was Prophet Ishaq or Prophet Isaac or Prophet Ismail or Prophet Ishmael, it matters not because that is not the moral of the story. Now, he went to his son, and I will say Prophet Ismail because I grew up with that version of the story. Again, it does not matter which son because they both behaved in the exact same manner. And he told him, and you can, that story is present in the Quran. You can read it to confirm what I am saying if you would like. And he told, he informed his son that he saw in the vision that he is sacrificing him. Uh, of course, he is, he was uh, he was not uh, do not think of this incident as an attempt of Prophet Ibrahim to try and disobey God. He was simply informing him of God's commandment. Then his son, whether it is Prophet Ishaq or Prophet Ismail, said, "Do as you are commanded. I will be I will be patient, uh, and I will accept." Allah's commands. Just as he was about to be sacrificed, so Prophet Ibrahim placed his son at the altar and he was about to cut off his head. Allah then, or God, sent 
a sheep from the heavens and commanded Prophet Ibrahim or Abraham to sacrifice this sheep instead of his son. This sheep is the same sheep that was accepted from uh, Abel or Habil. It was the exact same sheep. So this is what I meant when you can trace the origin of the story of the sacrifice to Prophet Adam, peace be upon him. Now some people, uh, and I see that in atheists, or confused Christians, and by confused I mean those who do not understand their religion well, because the priests preach uh, a topic and the Bible says the opposite of that. You see a priest drinking wine, but in the Bible it says do not drink wine, which leads to confusion. Now, people claim that, oh, God is evil. Why? Because he commanded Prophet Ab Ibrahim or Abraham, peace be upon him, to sacrifice his son. Firstly, you must understand prophets have a specialized status. They are chosen by God individually. The person who speaks about these stories is not a prophet. So you cannot extrapolate the incident to yourself because you are not a prophet. And you cannot ask for prophethood because prophets feel twice the pain of a regular human being. And since most people in this day and age cannot even tolerate their own pain, imagine how they would feel if they had to tolerate twice the pain. So prophets have a specialized status. Do not compare yourself to them. Do not say why did the, was this prophet uh, allowed to do this or to do that. What we can extrapolate is the following. God commanded prophet Abraham to sacrifice his son. That was a test of obedience to see if Prophet Abraham will actually obey the command or not and to see if his son will accept and be uh, yeah actually it's just, just accept I cannot find the proper word for it in English in Arabic of course it is much easier to describe the situation but it is difficult in English it was also a test for the son to see if they would accept God's command willingly, knowingly, and happily. And to prove that God is not evil, as some heretics claim, is that as he was about to sacrifice his son, God halted the continuation of that process and provided the sheep instead. If God was evil, as these idiots claim, he would, Prophet Ibrahim would have killed his son if God is evil. And I just love how people keep claiming that God is evil when it does not suit them. But when it suits them, they forget God. So when they are happy, oh, I found a boyfriend, oh, I found a girlfriend, oh, I found a fancy car, they never say God is good. But whenever something terrible happens to them, oh, God is evil. Look what happened to me. I lost my son. Uh, in a miscarriage or oh my boyfriend hates me now or oh my girlfriend hates me now so why did you f remember God in that situation but forget God in the previous situation that just shows double standards anyways that is a tale for another time thus the day that prophet Ismail or prophet Ishmael peace be upon him or prophet Ishaq or prophet Isaac's <coughs> or Prophet Isaac, peace be upon him, were spared, either or, that became an Islamic holiday, Eid al-Adha, to remember the day that uh, the son was spared by God's command. And that is why we sacrifice the sheep on that day. In remembrance, but in actuality, it is to feed people. Think of it as a soup kitchen or a charitable event. Now, this does not mean that we only feed poor people on that day, of course. Read about the tenets of Islam, considering generosity, charity, and uh, hospitality, and you will see what I mean. And you will also be surprised that no religion, 
no constitution, no amendment, no governmental law, speaks about generosity, uh, hospitality, and uh, charity as, uh, as Islam does. Islam is more charitable, more generous, and more hospitable than any of these laws or ideologies. Now, in addition to the sacrifice, there are certain uh, liturgies we must perform. If we are performing Hajj or the pilgrimage to Mecca, which and some of them are in remembrance of what Lady Hajar did with her son, uh, Prophet Ismail or Prophet Ishmael, peace be upon him. And some of them are in remembrance of what Prophet Abraham or Prophet Ibrahim did at that time. But again, that is not the purpose of the uh, of this video. We are speaking about Eid, not Hajj. So I would like to keep this limited to the scope. And that is, uh, I probably would say, a brief <laughs> recollection of the uh, heritage or the lineage of our Eid, known as Eid Al-Adha. Uh, or the Eid, uh, the holiday of the sacrifice. Now, to end this uh, video, I would like to remind everyone of the chant that you should be chanting throughout the 10 days until uh, Eid is reached. I will write it in English first for those who do not understand Arabic. And then I will chant it five times, mainly because five is my favorite number, but also God, uh, at least from what I recall, God loves odd numbers. And that is why Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, if he uh, uh, was happy about a matter, he would, uh, it is difficult to, to mention the word in English, uh, I guess you could say he would praise the event three times. Or you know what? I will mention, I will chant it three times to follow in the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So here is the translation in English. <coughs> of course, this is not the most accurate translation, considering it is slightly difficult to translate from Arabic to English, but this is a uh, this is the closest I could muster. If if someone feels they could translate the chants better, please do so in the comments below so that everyone can learn. Oh God, we heed your call, the call to the pilgrimage, that is. <coughs> oh God, we heed your call for truly uh, there is no one that uh, oh man this is really difficult to translate in english <laughs> uh, let us see uh, uh, for you lack any partner or associate a partner or associate as in another god or another deity to rule over the universe with that is what this means for you truly lack any partner or associate so this is the first uh, verse i guess you could call it the first verse the gratitude, the blessings, and sovereignty, sovereignty of the universe that is, are yours and yours alone. I capitalize the pronouns uh, in respect of God, of course. Uh, for you, truly, uh, 
truly lack any partner or associate. Uh, yeah, and basically you can keep repeating this chant throughout the 10 days until Eid. Eid is technically the 10th day, so the first nine days of Dhul Hijjah or the uh, month of pilgrimage. And here is the chant in Arabic. You can find it anywhere online. It is not a secretive chant. Practically everyone knows this chant. So the chant is as follows. لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك So that was the chant and I would like to end with a supplication so if you would please say Ameen after me, I would truly appreciate that. Allahumma aghfir lana warhamna, wa aghfir lana khatayana yawm al-deen, innaka afuwun kareemun tahibu al-afwa fa'afu anna, Allahumma ameen. O God, please forgive our sins and misdeeds in this life and in the hereafter, for you are truly the most merciful, the most just, and the most generous. Amen. I hope this video was uh, helpful and beneficial to you all and I, I hope you have uh, a wonderful Eid, uh, Eid Mubarak to my brothers and sisters throughout the world uh, and Eid Mubarak means blessed Eid in, uh, in English and Eid means holiday. Uh, though we may be apart, know that you are never forgotten. We remember our brothers and sisters throughout the world. Even if we are separated by nations or by conflict, you are always on our minds and in our hearts. Eid Mubarak everyone. And I hope if you are performing a pilgrimage, Hajjun Mabruk or a blessed a pilgrimage, blessed Hajj. And if you were unable to attend Hajj this year, uh, uh, Allah grant you an opportunity to do so in the upcoming years. Uh, Allahumma ameen. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Be safe, take care, and peace be upon you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. <coughs> وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد <تصفيق>